I have some great terrible neighbor stories for you today and you're going to love the title story too. Here's our first one. I, then 20, now 21, am autistic, have memory problems, and at the time worked a full-time job as a cashier and made enough money to want to move closer to work. As I was scrolling through posts, I found one about a family with a giant house looking for a roommate. The family was basically a man, woman, a daughter, and the man's father. The rent was cheap, it looked amazing, and the description was perfect for me. I quickly texted and my first question was about pets as I have an emotional support dog. Long story short, I met them and set my boundaries, stating that if they accept me, then I wanted them to know that I am sensitive to yelling and violence due to my autism and PTSD. They were fine with it and stated that, just like normal people, they had small arguments, but they kept it in the confines of their private room, which turned out to be a lie. I ended up living with them for about six months, and this is what made me leave. After moving in, it seemed okay at first, until the man and woman, who was a couple, would have screaming fights in the shared living room where I could hear everything in my bedroom, and then the man, who was technically the landlord but didn't work and made small money online, became a drunk. He drank every night, which at first I was okay with because it didn't bother me, but then he began to get violent when drunk. His first suspiciously violent outburst I noticed when he lifted the dining room table and kept on moving it while drunk. I was making Christmas letters at the table at the time and had to stop and continue the next day because I couldn't work like that. He was laughing, so I was a little shaken, but not in fear of my life. After that, he announced that he was quitting drinking as he noticed it was affecting those around him which outside I told him congratulations and inside I was relieved. I felt safer knowing an outburst wouldn't happen again. Boy was I wrong. A week later he started drinking more than ever. It was just after Christmas and I was baking in the kitchen for a Christmas party at a co-workers and friends place. The household knew ahead of time that I was going to be baking. The plan was, the co-workers pick me up that night with the desserts, spend the night, and then enjoy the party the next day. Before I got started baking, I noticed that the only brown sugar in the house was hard, and I understand that you can still use hard brown sugar, but I figured I can buy some on my own since my co-workers have texture problems like I do, so I didn't want to risk them biting a chunk of brown sugar, and it was no problem since I had to go to the store to get something else anyways. So I told the man that I was walking to the store for brown sugar, it was a two minute walk, and then left. I came back a few minutes later. He says, I was trying to tell you before you left that we have brown sugar here. And I say, oh sorry, I didn't hear you, but, but I know, I just wanted to get some that wasn't hard. You can still use it if it's hard. I know, I just wanted some that wasn't. That's just a waste of money. I know, but it's my money to waste. Just to let everyone reading know, I never used anyone else's money for any food or anything while I lived there. If I wanted something, I bought it myself, even if it would end up being shared between everyone. And then the woman, who was dating the man, said to the man, Babe, if she wants to buy stuff herself, she can, it's her money. Then the man huffed, and I got to baking. As I was baking, the man kept drinking. The man, woman, me, and our new roommate who just moved in approximately a month prior was there. I was getting all my baking stuff around when I noticed the sugar was on the counter behind the man's chair. The man was not in his chair, I assumed he got up to go get something, so I walked over and went to gently move his chair just an inch to the side. His chair was a desk chair with wheels so that I could grab the sugar and when the man suddenly jumped into his chair, sitting down and blocking me from reaching the sugar. I looked at him, stunned for a moment because he came out of nowhere and I noticed he was already drunk. I say, um, excuse me, but could I get the sugar? I don't know, can ya? I was talking softly and carefully throughout the conversation as I knew he was drunk. Well, your chair is blocking me. Could I please get the sugar? Why don't you just push me aside like you always do? That made me confused. What? I'm not pushing you. You were going to. You could ask and not be rude. I'm sorry, but I wasn't going to push you. I was only gently moving your chair to get some sugar. You were going to shove me. That's rude. I just wanted to end the conversation and bake. I'm sorry. Can you please allow me to get the sugar? I don't know. You were going to push me. The woman says, babe, just, just let her get the sugar. It's just right there. 
Then he scooted the chair so I could get the sugar, and then I started baking. As I was baking, the man drank more. The man talking to me said, You like to shove people around, don't you? Wait, what? You know, you shoved me aside without a word before. Wait, no, 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 what? Honestly, I was confused at this. I hadn't remembered ever shoving him. Ever. Just over there, pointing to the dishwasher, you shoved me to get past before and you didn't apologize or anything. Honestly, the kitchen was extremely small. I don't remember ever shoving him or bumping into him, but with how small the kitchen was, it was likely that I accidentally bumped into him at one point in the past and I didn't notice. Oh, I don't remember, but I'm sorry if I did. Oh, I remember. I remember everything. It was about a, a month after you moved in or so. I was standing near the dishwasher in the sink when you, uh, you passed me by and you shoved me, yeah, without a single word of apology. I'm sorry, I don't remember that as I have memory problems, but if it happened, then it was an accident and I apologize. He then huffed and I was left to baking more. I was confused as to why he'd mentioned something that may have happened five months prior. Honestly, after that, some details for a while I can't remember, as it's all a blur since I tried not to acknowledge what was going on around me. So skip maybe 20 to 30 minutes after that. I was sitting in the dining room and kitchen with the man, the woman, and the new roommate still there, and I was waiting for the cookies to cool before putting them into the cookie tin that I had so that the cookies didn't stick together. The main things I remember is the man kept drinking and getting frustrated over nothing. Even getting annoyed to where with my last batch of cookies, he started grabbing them and throwing them into my tin without letting them cool even when the woman was trying to stop him, saying, Babe, stop, her cookies are still cooling. But he wouldn't listen. One of the cookies broke, and since he seemed interested in the cookies, I decided to be nice and offer him the broken one to try. He smiled, took the cookie, and threw it away in the trash can behind him. I ignored everything, hoping time would pass faster, waiting for my coworkers to pick me up. The back door was connected to the kitchen, so I just stayed in the kitchen, waiting as I planned to go out the back door to my coworker's car, and I didn't want to go upstairs to my room as I didn't trust the man with my desserts. I was afraid he would break them while I was gone. So I sat on my phone to distract my brain from everything going on. Again, this part is blurry since I was distracting myself from what was going on, but I remember feeling scared and just trying not to think about that feeling. But the man started to argue with our new roommate over literally nothing. Our roommate stayed calm and kept seated while the man stood up, asking the roommate if he wanted to fight. The main thing I remember is the man standing up, yelling, and saying something like, You're no good, don't pay rent. The roommate has not paid rent, which was agreed on before he moved in until he got a stable job, and waste space. I deserve better. We deserve better. The woman's daughter deserves better. She deserves so much better. The sentence about the woman's daughter made no sense. She lives with us, but no one had even mentioned her, and the roommate wasn't even part of the woman's daughter's life. The roommate, calm and still sitting down, says, Man, I, I know. No one has even mentioned her. I know I don't pay rent. I will pay once I'm able to get out of this slump, which you agreed to when I moved in. The man, still standing and yelling, says, Well, I don't agree to it now. You get out. Get out of my house. The woman's daughter deserves better than you. The woman, while holding the man's arm, Babe, sit down. No one has even mentioned her. I don't know what's gotten into you. My roommate, still sitting calmly, says, If you want me out, I'll get out, but you gotta talk to me calmly, man. I don't plan on not paying you, and you know this. You don't need to act as if I'm just against you all the time. I don't understand your problem with me. My problem, the man shouts, my problem is you not being able to pay frickin' rent and her, pointing to me, shoving people aside. At this point, my brain only comprehended me being mentioned, so I just looked up from my phone and said, Huh? Yeah, you, you two, pointing back and forth between me and him, are in cahoots, aren't you? You plan on both not paying and running off somewhere cheap. Honestly, I had, and well, still have, no idea where that came from. I hardly spoke two words to the new roommate, and I hardly knew his name, and we never even texted each other. The only time we ever really talked was to trade Pokemon on Pokemon Go. Plus, I always paid rent, even paying ahead of time, and I was never late and never said that I wouldn't pay. Wait, what? We, we barely talk or know each other. 
Bullcrap. You two plan on teaming up together and leaving us in the dust with no income. I know it. I'm smarter than you think I am. I have a college freaking degree. At that point, I just didn't respond, and I went back in my phone to distract my brain from everything going on because I was afraid of what was going to happen if I responded or cried. Roommate replies, Man, chill. Nothing's going on. OP's just minding her own business, and we hardly know each other. Why would we go and try to go against you? Why do you think all men are against you? Does my existence threaten you? Does it bother you that there's another man in the house? You are against me. You want to fight like a real man? Come on, you and your crappy tattoos get up now and fight me. The man was standing even closer to the roommate, but roommate didn't seem to mind. He didn't seem to want to agitate the situation. Roommate replies, Man, I'm not going to get up and I'm not going to fight you. Now this is the part that I saw because it was literally out of nowhere. The roommate put his bottle of alcohol on his mouth to take a sip and the man smacked the roommate's bottle out of his mouth, making his mouth bleed. Alcohol splattered everywhere and onto me and then I looked at roommate and saw his mouth bleeding. I looked at him with concern because, well, his mouth was bleeding. The roommate, oh man, why'd you do that? God, my mouth is bleeding. The man, seeing me looking at roommate, see, you're in cahoots, why do you care about the moochin' broke bee so much? He's hurt. His mouth is bleeding. I'm okay, roommate says. It's just a small cut, but ah, man, that was uncalled for. What did I do to deserve that? Then I can't remember much after that, but I do remember. Very shortly after, I know that I needed to get out of the house immediately because I feared for my life. It got to where I was so scared that my legs felt like jelly and my trauma was coming back to me. I got up to go where some of my desserts were so I could take them outside when the man shouts, where do you think you're going? My feet paused and I turned to see the man started walking a few steps toward me in a threatening way. I was afraid of what he was going to do to me. I thought I'd be hit or worse, but I didn't know what to do or even say. And then the roommate called out to the man, distracting him from me. Hey, let her go. She's getting away from here like a reasonable person. You let her go. Then the roommate gave me a look that seemed to say, I got this, you go. So I gathered all my things and ran out the back door and started on the back door steps trying to figure out what to do since I didn't feel safe. A few minutes went by as I was texting my coworkers, telling them everything and asking about bringing my dog and staying with them for a bit. Then I heard voices coming from the front porch. I listened in to make sure it wasn't the man's voice, and it was roommate's voice. I ran to the voice, afraid of what happened, and then I saw cop cars. Hey, what's going on? The roommate said, OP, you okay? I called the cops because of that bee assaulting me. You hanging in there? Then I just said, thank you, and burst at a cry of relief. I felt safe outside where the police were, and I was glad to see roommate was okay. Then roommate held out his arms and I cried for a while as he was telling me, it's okay, you're safe, he's not going to hurt you. And I just kept on repeating thank you over and over. It seemed roommate got done with the police mainly, but I could see woman and man spying through the glass of the front door with them saying, OP is there, what's she doing there? I felt scared to step in there. The police asked if we had a place to stay. The roommate said he was unsure of what to do long term, but he could find some place overnight but his stuff was in the house. I told the police that I was going to leave and not live with them again because I felt unsafe. The police agreed and talked to the man and woman and told them that they are to let us grab our stuff and everyone decide what to do in the future later. After the police left, I went inside to grab my dog because I was afraid they were going to hurt her. I grabbed my dog and as I was leaving with her out the back door, the man kept on trying to say that I didn't need to leave and that it was all roommate's fault and that bee is no good and running a perfectly good thing. I sat outside with my dog and my stuff and my co-worker picked me up and I cried until I reached their place. I felt sick and dizzy, I felt dehydrated but nauseous all at the same time. We got to their house and my friends helped me up the stairs and onto the floor as I was so dizzy I just needed to lie down. It's, it's really hard to describe the feeling. Like everything was a dream, but it repeated in my head over and over. The more that it repeated, the more I cried, and the more I cried, the more I felt like I was just going to faint. 
and I had one of the friends there and take my phone away from me because man and woman were blowing it up telling me to not move and that I over exaggerated the situation by leaving even going so far as accusing me of being with roommate and also when I told them I was leaving permanently the man tried telling me that I was too young and irrational to make a decision and not mature enough long story short after I calmed down I got sick I got really sick I've just I've never been so sick in my life I made a deal to have three days to leave cause in three days I'd have to pay the next month rent I spent the time working while sick, while broke, and while living with my co-workers while finding a place to live. Eventually, another co-worker who knew of my situation sent me a link to an apartment for rent that I moved into on the deadline. I moved out with help from my mother, stepdad, and amazing friends. Admittedly, I was living off of $3 for a bit, but taxes came in and I was on my feet in no time and now live happily and also got a second dog to keep my emotional therapy dog company. About two or three weeks later, the man in the woman's house burnt down. Did they do it themselves because they couldn't afford it without my rent? Who knows, but it was either that or righteous karma. An update, I'm not sure about roommate honestly. The day after the incident, the man was texting me trying to say I overreacted and saying that roommate went back and apologized for the situation, so why am I making this harder and not coming back? So far as I know, he went back, but I don't think he was there the day of the fire. And yeah, with the brown sugar, I really didn't have time for that, so I just got a new one which was faster. Neighbor cites us for having sticks on our property. I received a letter in the mail from our city stating that we have violated one of the ordinances in our city. Apparently, we have a pile of brush and sticks in the backyard, which, according to the ordinance, you cannot have any large amounts of debris on your yard. Here's the thing. We do not pay for or live in an HOA community, so I can't understand why someone would have a problem with some extra nature on somebody's backyard. The sticks are in my backyard and facing the neighbor's backyard, so it would be impossible for anyone from either street to actually see a pile of sticks at that location. The person would have to go into mine or my neighbor's yard to actually see it. We now have two weeks to get all of this removed or we will be cited and taken to court if we refuse to pay. No amount has been posted for the citation yet. The reason for this post is that my neighbor, who I never met before and was told is never in the house as he or she lives permanently in Florida, we live in Ohio, complained about the pile of sticks on my property. I just don't understand why someone has the need to make someone else's life more miserable because they don't like something on someone else's property. They are just sticks. What harm are they going to do to you or your house? The neighbor's house is about 20 yards away from the stick pile too. The funny part about this is the stick pile has been there for over a year. We bought our current house about one year ago and hired a guy to cut down a decaying large tree in the backyard. He obviously did not do his job and clean up all the sticks from our place, but he placed them all in the back and has been there since. I thought about calling up the tree guy that we hired, but he was just a guy with no business entity and I no longer have his phone number either. I am really torn on just not doing anything, but I really don't want to gamble on paying money I don't have. An update. I talked to my neighbor to the right of me, who we are very friendly with and definitely did not rat on us, and they told me that neither neighbor behind us would not have a problem like that. So I talked to the house directly behind me, and an elderly lady lives there all alone. I spoke with her, and she was extremely nice, and was very surprised that someone would do that in our neighborhood. So that rules out that house. However, there's another house next to hers where the owner is an eccentric 85-year-old millionaire. So, I will be trying him next. Do you agree or disagree with this take? I definitely see what's wrong with that person, but you could just throw the sticks away and be done with it. Well, right, I could just get rid of it and the problem solved. I just hate, hate, hate it when someone cannot keep their head out of someone else's business. It feels like a threat with the money, since it could end in a fine if I don't do it, but it did no harm at all to the owner. Like if the sticks were on their property, sure, I would no doubt get rid of them. But if they're on my property, come on. Sounds like these people just want drama. What would you do about this? Sue Karen, she towed my deployed brother's car off our property with an update. Click the video on your screen so you find out what happens to Karen and I'll see you there.